Now, if you will, take your Bibles and turn in it to the book of 2 Kings, uh, 2 Kings chapter 19, 2 Kings chapter 19. I know this is a familiar passage of, uh, of Scripture, 2 Kings 19, verse 14. I, I, I don't remember for the life of me if I've preached on this or not, uh, because this is such a cherished and sacred scripture in my own heart uh, that I, uh, I I read it very frequently. I turn over and just look at it, and there's, there's things in it that catches my eye. It's been a help to me. I pray it will be a help to you uh, during this time in which we live. Uh, and so 2 Kings 19, uh, you need to know that you can also find the account of this over in uh, over in uh, First Samuel, I believe it is, over in the Chronicles, and then again in Isaiah 37, Isaiah writes about it because he's involved uh, in what takes place here. Uh, but let me read the text, and then I will give you the background uh, as to what is taking place. Second uh, uh, Kings 19, verse 14. Second Kings 19, verse 14. The Bible says this, <clears throat> And Hezekiah, that's the king of, of Judah, received the letter of the hand of the messengers and read it. And Hezekiah went up to the house of the Lord and he spread it before the Lord. You probably need to underline that little phrase, spread it before the Lord. We'll come back to that. Verse 15, And Hezekiah prayed before the Lord and said, O Lord God of Israel, which dwelleth between the cherubims, thou art the God, even thou alone of all the kingdoms of the earth, thou hast made heaven and earth. Lord, bow down thine ear and hear. Open, Lord, thine eyes and see and hear the words of Sennacherib, which hath sent him to reproach the living God. Of a truth, Lord, the king of Assyria have the kings of Assyria have destroyed the nations and their lands and have cast their gods into the fire, for they were no gods, but the work of men's hands, wood and stone. Therefore, they have destroyed them. Now, therefore, O Lord our God, I beseech thee. Save thou us out of his hand, that all the kingdoms of the earth may know that thou art the Lord God, even thou only. Then Isaiah the son of Amos sent to Hezekiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, That which thou hast prayed to me against Sennacherib, king of Assyria, I have heard. You need to underline that phrase right there. I have heard. Now, Let's, look, let's, let's think about the story just for a minute and then I'll just bring you a simple thought on this text. Simply, quite simply, you need to know that Sennacherib, the king of Assyria, uh, that he had been going forth and attacking neighboring nations and not only attacking, but he had been conquering uh, In fact, uh, what he does is, is he, has a, he writes a letter uh, and he has that letter sent uh, to Hezekiah, the king of Judah, and it's a threatening letter. Uh, and one of the things he wants Hezekiah to be aware of and to remember is, he said, Hezekiah, he said, don't you remember how that we, that I, uh, as king of Assyria, I've been going forth and we've been, uh, we've been uh, going forth and declaring war and we've been conquering and we've been taking over other nations uh, and we have, uh, we have been victorious in all that we have done. And, and even Hezekiah admits that as he's praying, he said, Lord, this is the king uh, who is going into these other countries and he's taking their gods, which are not gods because they're made with hands uh, and eyes can see them, they're idols. But nevertheless, this, the king of Assyria is going in taking these nations and, uh, and going straight into their gods and burning them into a fire. Uh, and so... King, the king of Assyria, he sends this threatening letter to Hezekiah, who is king of Judah. Now listen to me. Hezekiah, from day one, from day one, he had a heart for God. He followed God with all of his heart. In fact, as soon as he, uh, as soon as he uh, took the throne... One of the very first things he did was, was he went into the, the houses of God and he into the temple and, and he began to clean it up and he began to purify. See, it had become corrupt uh, and worship had been, uh, had been uh, distorted. Uh, and, uh, and, and so he went in and he set things in order. That's what he's known for uh, as king. Boy, listen, if there's one thing we need in our land, and I'm not preaching this, 
Now, if there's one thing we need in our land is, is that we need some churches and some, and some men leading those churches who will set things in order uh, and clean up the house of the Lord. Uh, and uh, uh, Because the church has become so worldly in so many different aspects. Uh, but nevertheless, and so King Hezekiah got this letter. He knew the reputation of Sennacherib. Sennacherib was... Uh, uh, in Hezekiah's day, what Hitler was in my grandparents' generation. Uh, he went forth through all of Europe, conquering all of the neighboring countries. Uh, and so at the very mention of Hitler and the Nazis, all of Europe trembled and shook. Uh, and so it was with Hezekiah. Uh, and so Hezekiah got this threatening letter uh, that said, Hezekiah, listen, I'm coming after you. Uh, in fact, I just want you to know, don't even try to fight against me and don't fight against us because the same thing that's happened to all these other countries is going to happen to you. And so you might as well go ahead and give up now, throw in the towel, and lay it all down because I've got your number, I'm coming to you. Well, Hezekiah does a few things. One of the things he does is he immediately recognizes his needy dependence upon the Lord. First thing he does is he sends messengers to Isaiah and he says, go get the man of God uh, because I need him here. I need his advice, this old prophet of God. I need to know what he says about this. And, and not only that, but I need him praying with me. And, and so uh, Hezekiah, he then makes his way to the temple, unsure of how to handle this threat, unsure of how to handle this trouble as he calls it in one place in this text, these, these toils that he's about to experience. He doesn't know what to do. So envision this. The king himself, in fear, because he's facing a dark time. He's, he's in trouble. He faces a formidable foe. The king himself, he takes that letter. Now picture in your mind, Sometimes when you read the Word of God, you've got to use a sanctified imagination and let Scripture be lived out in your mind and in your heart. So the king makes his way immediately to the temple. He comes into God's house. He takes that letter and he spreads it out before the Lord and he begins to pray. Now, I want you to see what Hezekiah has done. Hezekiah has in this... In this uh, in this position of respect. And we see the prayer that he prayed. But in humility he laid before the Lord. Uh, and, in it, and he laid all of his uncertainties. All of his doubts. And all of his fears. He spread it out before the Lord. And he began to pray. And call on the God of heaven. He began to pray. Or listen to me. And he begins to pray. And he does a couple of things. He says. O oh God of heaven. The one who sits on the throne. Friend, I want you to write this down and I want you to remember this. Isaiah is the very prophet. He is the very prophet. He looked further back in eternity than anybody in all of the Bible. He looked back before the fall of Satan. He looked way back in eternity. Further back than any man that has ever lived. Uh, and then God has allowed him to see further into the future than any man that has ever lived. Maybe John was close uh, on the Isle of Patmos. And so Isaiah, he saw God in eternity past further than any man, and he, saw, and he, he has seen God in eternity future further than any man. And I want you to know that what Isaiah saw in eternity past and what Isaiah saw in eternity future, that it never changed between eternity past and eternity future. And it was this one thing. In eternity past, he saw God sitting on his throne. In eternity future, he shows us that God is still on his throne. And so that tells me that if God is on His throne in eternity past, and if God is on His throne in eternity future, that tells me there's never been a time in all of human history when God was never on His throne. Friend, I don't care how bad things have got. I don't care how bad the economy gets. I don't care how bad politics get in Washington, D.C. 
I don't care how bad things get with the World Health Organization, with things in Italy, with things in Germany, with things in the UK. Friend, I don't care how many world wars there's been. I don't care how many earthquakes there has been. I don't care how many famines there has been. Listen to me. None of those things have ever shaken God or rattled Him from His throne in heaven. These are serious things. Serious things to be concerned about that I mentioned. But it's never shaken God's throne in heaven. He's so far removed from us, yet He's so very involved in our lives because we're His children and He loves us. But Hezekiah, He comes. He comes and He, he, he has this question in His mind, Lord, what do I do? What do I do? And probably the first question is, is when he received word as he stood wherever he was at. Maybe he was in his office. Maybe he was on his throne. And, and he received word that it's bad. And it's going to be bad. And nobody's ever escaped the hand of this enemy. And so as soon as those words hit him, Imagine those words you've heard that fell to your ears that just shook you to the very core, whatever they may have been. That is what Hezekiah experienced. And maybe the first thing he thought was, I don't know what to do. What am I going to do? I don't know what to do. But then he did the thing he knew to do. He got up and he ran to the Lord and he spread that letter before the Lord and he said, Lord, I don't know what to do. Uh, but Lord, I know you're on your throne. Uh, I know that you are creator. You made the heavens and the earth. And so he appeals to the Lord as creator. He appeals to him as redeemer. See, he made the world and all that is within it. He made you and I. And then he sought us and he bought us and he saved us. And he set us free from the bondage and the chains of sin and give us new life in Christ. And so Hezekiah was saying this, I acknowledge you as a mighty God who made the heavens and the earth and the sun and the moon and stars. And I acknowledge you as our Redeemer who delivered us with the power of your right hand from the hand of our oppressors and enemies in our yesterdays. And so God, even though I don't know what to do, I know that you're still able to deliver your children. And so I say all that to say this. There's somebody watching right now on Facebook. And maybe you're not watching now. Maybe it'll be this afternoon. Maybe it will be tomorrow morning or tonight maybe. You're watching right now and there's something going on in your life. And you have just got this one big question in your heart. <clears throat> and it is this. <clears throat> Excuse me. Lord... What do I do? What do I do? Some of you, you may be having trouble. Maybe it's with your children. And you've got this huge question in your heart, Lord, I don't know what to do. So, Lord, I'm turning to you as creator, as redeemer of my soul and my life. What do I do? Some of you may be struggling in your marriage. You may be, it may be a relationship that you just come to a place and and well, it's torn you up deep inside. And the only thing you can ask is, Lord, what do I do? Some of you, maybe it's with your job because uh, this, this COVID virus. Maybe you've been laid off. Maybe your plant shut down. Maybe, maybe not only have you uh, lost your job during this time, but maybe they're going to do away with it altogether now. Maybe the place you work is never going to reopen. I don't know your situation and, and, and it's eating your gut out right now. And so the question in your mind is, Lord, not only do I know, not know what, I don't know what to do. Lord, I've got to, you've got to help me here. What do I do, Lord? Maybe there's a pastor here, or a, past, a pastor that's watching. And you're struggling because your church is in crisis during this time. And, and, and you don't know where to turn, and you've turned to the you've turned to the state conventions, and you've turned to these associations, and and you've been trying to watch your pastor friends or your pastor mentors online or uh, on YouTube. Friend, listen to me. What you need to do, my brother, is 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 you need to get yourself spread out before the Lord, and you need to cry to Him, and you need to say, Lord, what do I do during this during these dark days and these difficult times? Picture the king getting off his throne and making his way to the temple, the house of God, where he, where he spread himself before the Lord. 
And he brought his trouble and he brought his problems to the Lord. Well, listen to me. I want you to know this. Some of you watching, happy you can come. I feel like I'm probably, I'm going to close. Some of you watching, you know this very truth. You have actually, literally and physically, you've brought some of the darkest days and, and uh, some of the darkest times of your life. Some of the times of most uncertainty in your life. You have literally went to the Lord with them and spread them out before the Lord and laid yourself out before Him. Now I want to say something right here because we're talking about a time of crisis in the life of Hezekiah. We're, we're talking about a threat. In fact, we're not just talking about a threat. We're talking about a promise from the enemy. The enemy said, I'm coming to get you. I've got your number. Your ticket has come up and you are next. Don't even fight against this thing. And so this was a dark, dark time in the life of Hezekiah. And he had, and his, and his heart may have been so full of doubt at that time. Lord, what do I do? And so I want to say this. I know that you can pray walking around. I do, I do that every day. I've done that this morning. I know you can pray while working in the field. I know you can pray while hoeing corn. I know you can pray while being on patrol in a patrol car, riding around in a fire truck. I, I get that. Now, there's all kinds of positions of prayer in the Bible. I understand that. In fact, we find people pray in the Bible from a riverbank uh, all the way to being on a cross. We see prayers being made. So you can pray anywhere, anytime that you'll go to the Father above through Jesus Christ. But I want to say something that some of you know for certain and you've experienced. There are these times in our life, crisis moments, fearful times, uncertainty, where literally you have spread yourself and your problem, your troubles, your fears before the Lord, where walking around wasn't good enough, where riding down the road in your truck was not good enough, but where you knew you had to get somewhere and get still before God, in fact, even lay yourself out before Him and pray to the God of heaven, what? Do I do? When you come to church uh, and, and, you, and you get around some worshipers, hey, not, even, not, even, uh, not even in church, sometimes you may meet someone in a random place uh, and, uh, and you just get to talking about the Lord and you know they are a worshiper. I promise you this, you ever get around anybody who's a worshiper, you ever come sit in church and you just sit there and you see other people worshiping, I promise you this, that's some people who at one time or sometimes in their life have had to spread themselves literally out before the God of heaven with fears, anxieties, troubles, frettings, and worries, and they've had to call on God only to see that God come to deliver them. If you've ever had to spread yourself out before God and then been delivered by that same God, you'll be a worshiper, my friend. Nobody will have to prompt you. Nobody will have to tell you to raise your hands in the air. Nobody will have to tell you to stand. Nobody will have to tell you to weep. Nobody will have to tell you to sing your song. Nobody will have to tell you to give your testimony. If you have ever spread yourself out before God and had to beg the God of heaven to deliver you from this crisis point, this crisis moment, and had God deliver you, then you're a worshiper, my friend. You'll never judge somebody worshiping <laughs> If you've ever had to spread yourself out before God and then been delivered. Because having experienced deliverance in a great way, <laughs> there's no telling what a, God, a child of God will do to worship Him. So listen to me. So somebody watching right now, in fact, you probably ought to just make a comment on that. So others reading will know. You, you ought to just say, I... I'm, I'm one. I've been there. I've had, to, I've had to spread myself out in my fears and my troubles. When walking around praying good, wasn't good enough. When driving down the road wasn't good enough. But I had to get on my face because I, I needed the hand of God His living. I'm one of the ones. I have spread myself before the Lord. And I've experienced His deliverance in my life. Time and
maybe even time again. I'm one of those worshipers, Pastor David. I'm one of those worshipers, preacher, because I know what it's like to have been delivered. You put that on there and you post that, and I say this because there's somebody watching right now. And let's, let's, let's be very real. Again, I'm going to be very real with you. You have really never in brokenness in fear and tremblings you've never got down on your knees and, and, pour, and, and spread your troubles out before the Lord and said, Lord, I need your help. I don't know what to do. See, what you've been quick to do is you've always been quick to run to a friend, a confidant. You've run to them and said, oh, let me tell you what's happening. Let me tell you about this phone call I got from the doctor. Let me, let me tell you about what's going on with my kids. Let me, let me tell you what's going on in my life. Let me tell you about these fears that I've had. You've run to a, a friend, a human instrument. And, and thank God He uses our confidants and friends in our lives. I get it, I know. But before we run to them, we need to be running to the Lord. Sometimes we're quick to run to social media and get others praying for us. And I'm not knocking that. I am not knocking it. But it shouldn't be before we've run to the King seated on His throne. So some of you have never brought your trouble and your problem and spread it before the Lord. And you're, in a, you're at a crisis point right now. Man, I mean, you're hurting. The enemy's after you. He's on your tail. You're fearful. You're doubtful. And you just don't know what to do. Then, then you know what? You need to acknowledge. You need to get before the Lord and just acknowledge to Him, Lord, what do I do? Because I don't know what to do. What do I do? Man, we're, we're raising up this generation of preachers and seminaries today and and there's some of these modern seminaries is they're kicking, they're trying to stuff everything they can in these preachers and, and pumping them out of seminary and, and convincing them. We've taught you everything you need to know about pastoring. But, but, but young preachers, let me tell you something right now. When you start pastoring and you start going through the trials of pastoring and you start seeing the deep needs in the hearts of your people and the brokenness in the lives of your people and the pains in the life of your people, you're going to quickly discover that I don't know what to do. That textbooks can't teach me how to fix their lives and how to help, help them in their troubles. And you're going to find that the only place you know to go to is to the Lord. And, and to Him you're going to say, Lord, I don't know what to do to help my brother, my sister, this sheep, this lamb under my care. So Lord, what do I do? Just the other day I knew I was about to have a conversation on the phone with somebody in, with a deep-seated need. And I was praying as the phone was ringing. I was praying under my breath, in my heart, and maybe even on my lips, under my breath. I was saying, Lord, speak to me. Lord, speak to me. Lord, help me. Lord, help me. Lord, give me what they need. Give me what they need. Lord, I don't have it. If you don't give me something, I can't give them anything. So, Lord, help me. I need you, Lord. Let me say two things right here. And I close with this. So Hezekiah goes to the Lord and then he sends to Isaiah for, for Isaiah. And actually one of these texts, one of these passages of Scripture tells us that Isaiah and Hezekiah prayed together. That's that promise of Matthew 18, 19. Go look it up. Claim that promise in your life. Excuse me. They prayed together, but Hezekiah obviously spent time praying alone. And at one point when he finished praying after he first sought the Lord, he said, he sent messages, he said, go get, go get Isaiah. I need to hear from the Lord. And man, that's what I pray for you right now. Because in the midst of your uncertainties and in your fears and your troubles, when you say, Lord, I don't know what to do, what you really need is, is you need to hear from Jesus today. You need to hear from the Lord. Not some devotional guide, not some self-help magazine, not some Christian magazine. But you need to just get still before the Lord. You need to hear from the King Himself. Let Him speak to your heart. So that's my prayer for you that you hear from the Lord. So Hezekiah said, I need to hear from the Lord. And Isaiah sent word back and said, go tell Hezekiah this. Go tell him that the Lord said, your prayer is heard. I assure you, based on the authority of God's Word, 
that if you spread yourself before the God of heaven and you acknowledge Him as Creator who is on the throne and the Redeemer of your life, I assure you, based on the authority of God's Word, that when you weep before Him and say, Lord, what do I do? That your prayer is heard. That's a promise from God's Word that your prayer is heard. The very last thing I want you to see, and Abigail's going to sing, while she's singing, I, I want you to get on your knees in wherever you're at, wherever you may be watching from, because this is you today. I didn't randomly land on this text of Scripture. It's been burdened in my heart to share it with you. And so this is for you. She starts to sing in a moment. You're going to get on your knees and on your face. You'll put your face on the hardwood floor. You'll put your forehead on the carpet. And you'll spread your arms out. And you'll lay there like a baby before King Jesus. You'll say, Lord, I don't know what to do. But before she sings and you do that, I want you to notice one thing. The Bible says that Hezekiah brought that letter and spread it before the Lord. Now, in my mind as I envisioned this scene unfolding, I always envisioned Hezekiah coming to the altar of God. And he goes before the Lord in humility and in brokenness and in fear and trembling because he doesn't know what to do. And he took this letter... And I always envision him just opening that letter up and spreading it out before the Lord and then laboring in prayer before the God of heaven. But this morning as I looked at that phrase that he took that letter and he spread it before the Lord, I felt the Spirit just prompting me. Look into that. Read into that. Study it. There's more there. And so I looked up that little phrase in the original languages that he spread it before the Lord. So he comes into God's house. He's been threatened. The king of Assyria has said, I'm coming to get you. He sins for God's man and he runs to the house of the Lord and he comes in and he spreads that letter before the Lord. And quite literally... That little phrase, spread it before the Lord, <laughs> it means this. I hope you can see that. I hope you're watching on Facebook and can see what I'm doing. Because quite literally, this is what King Hezekiah did with that letter. Now, I don't know about you. <laughs> But I'm thinking that Hezekiah already knew. Because, see, he had walked with the Lord long enough to know that if you humble yourself before God, God will give grace to you. He had already walked with the Lord long enough to know that if I have a heart for God, God's going to honor everything I do. And God had done that in his life already. And so it in, may in, in be in the back of his mind and of his heart, even in the midst of his fear and worry. Listen, it's very possible to have faith in one hand and fear in another. It is. Worried, because that's what the flesh does. Fearful, because that's what the flesh does. Uncertain, because that's what the flesh does. And yet have an unshakable faith in an almighty God. And so I think that it's altogether possible that Hezekiah come and he was filled with fear and he was filled with tremblings and he really didn't know how to approach this and he really didn't know what to do, but he knew that if he cast it on the God of the ages, that God would give him grace and God would bring deliverance to him. And so he walks in and as a sign of the victory to come, <laughs> he starts tearing that letter up. And he says, Lord, I don't know what to do. Lord, the future's uncertain. Lord, I don't know which way to turn. Lord, I don't know how this thing's going to play out. Lord, I need some answers because I'm stuck. And Lord, whatever the outcome is, however this thing turns out, you're still God, and I still believe that you'll give us the victory yeah. in your way and in your time. A 
And sure enough, imagine that, that the Bible says Isaiah sent Hezekiah a message and he said, Hezekiah, your prayer has been heard and don't you worry about a thing because the Lord is going to go fight this battle for you. And sure enough, that's exactly what God did. Uh, God sent angels, if you will, and they went through the camp of the Assyrians and every one of rank, sergeants, lieutenants, captains, majors, colonels, and generals, those angels killed them in the Assyrian camp. 185,000 were slaughtered by the hand of the Lord. The rest of them woke up the next morning. They saw all the dead laying around. And they said, we're getting back to Assyria. We don't know what's going on, but we're done. Friend, let me tell you something. Your fears, your anxieties, your frettings, your worries, your uncertainties, these enemies that have overwhelmed you to this place where you don't know what to do. I want you to know something. God can so deliver you from these enemies that you will not see them anymore. And so what you need to do is you need to be encouraged, child of God, knowing that your prayer is going to be heard and you need to go ahead. Yes, bring your question marks to the Lord. Yes, spread yourself before Him and say, Lord, I'm troubled over this. I'm scared. These uncertainties have me fearful. I don't know where to turn. I don't know what to do. I'm not sure of the outcome. But Lord, what do I do? And Lord, while I'm waiting on You to tell me what to do, I'm going to go ahead and thank You now for what You're going to do. Because Lord, when I am weak and on my knees and trembling, then you are strong in my life. And so give thanksgiving to a God who's ever strong and mighty and your deliverer in your life.